This camera really does not like my oscilloscope screen. Okay, if you really want to use the Ainsley quantum schematic as exactly reproduced in the quantum article, you can. It produces, as I've uh, demonstrated many times before, an inverted duty cycle where the MOSFET or the gate pin 3 output is actually high much longer than the gate pin is low. So, for example, if I change the duty cycle control here, the top trace, of course we're not triggering, so let's go trigger you. Sorry about that. Old scopes capacitors are kind of getting bad. Uh, okay, so we can remain triggered here while I change the duty cycle. Right now I actually have it set to the longest possible duty cycle. Uh, longest possible off time, shortest possible on time is right there. The top trace is the 555 timer output. The baseline is indicated where that marker is on the right side of the graticle there. That's the zero volts. I'm turning the duty cycle potentiometer in the direction of, well, in the other direction. And as you can see, what's happening is the on time is getting longer and the off time is getting shorter. And right around here is where the thing really likes to run. In other words, at about a 90%, 95% on duty cycle. And as you can also see, it makes a good, clean, sharp pulse. It's a very nice fast rise time pulse generator. I like it for that reason. But unfortunately it will keep the MOSFET on rather than turning it off. Now I'm turning towards longer and longer duty cycles just to keep the scope stably triggering. Okay, so that won't work and so people have said well I gotta change the component values or I gotta mess around with the 555 struggle with that timer for all day trying to get it to make the right duty cycle and I you know you guess at the component values and all of that well you don't have to do that a 75 cent CMOS hex inverter the 4049 right there and about six inches of wire and a socket you take the output from the pin 3 of the 555 timer and you run it through two, uh, uh, an odd number of stages in this hex inverter. You can run it through one. I use three. I like to use three stages of inversion when I do this, if the timing is not too critical. And you tie the other inputs to either uh, VCC or ground, and then Bob's your uncle. The bottom trace now is the trace from the... 4049 40, and as you can see it's the exact inverse of the trace on the top uh, at the same voltages. We're looking at both those traces at 10 volts per division through a 10x attenuated probe. The only difference is that on the 4049 trace if you if you take a really close look at it if the damn camera would stay focused you can see that the top of that pulse peak is not straight flat across the top whereas the 555 timer trace is nice and, and rectangular all the way across. But that bottom trace is perfectly usable to drive Ainsley's COP17 power side of the circuit. And it didn't take all day to do, and it didn't take messing around with the extra components and figuring out different component values. All it took was dipping into the box and pulling out a 75 cent chip and a socket and about six inches of wire. But then again, I don't believe in zippons, so there you have it. <laughs>